What's going on there folks? Earthmaster here. It is uh, February 3rd, 2019, 427 p.m. here on the West Coast. And a lot of earthquake activity appearing out here on the West Coast over the past couple days in uh, a specific area that uh, unrest my nerves, uh, to say the least, um, right around the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, seeing a lot of activity just off the coast of Northern California and uh, these are not microquakes. These are somewhat uh, worrisome as these could lead and potentially lead to a bigger earthquake. But like I've been saying in the past couple of videos, update videos, that um, we've definitely been seeing an increase in pressure out here along the west coast. And that's been happening over the last couple of weeks. And it seems as though it's continuing in that general direction uh, with these uh, sequence of earthquakes off the coast of Northern California. I'm going to get rid of the Earthquake 3D globe and bring you guys over here to the latest USGS map of uh, all magnitudes over the last seven days, okay? Now, when you think about swarm, you think of hundreds and hundreds of earthquakes, right? You know, kind of like Yellowstone or Mammoth Lakes or any other area that might have a swarming type uh, feature going on. Uh, this activity, I don't think, I wouldn't call it a swarm, but... Um, let me go over here and go to interact here. Yeah, so once again, last seven days, all magnitudes um, in Northern California. This is Eureka area, Arcata. Um, the northern section of the San Andreas Fault System is out here uh, where it uh, turns into the Mendocino Fault System. Let me see if I can show you guys on this uh, map here if it's going to let me. I've seen it pop up there. One second. But anyway, um, yeah, so there's a Mendocino Fault System right off the northern part of the San Andreas Fault System right here. It goes down here. Kind of I was hoping this thing would work like it was prior to this video. But anyway, this red line going south of these earthquakes, northern part of the San Andreas Fault System, where it extends up to the north and northwest uh, as a Mendocino Fault. And just up here north of the Mendocino Fault System where, where these earthquakes are occurring is the Cascadia Subduction Zone mega thrust area. And that's an area that we need to watch and pay attention to. Um, whenever I see this type of activity occurring within a very um, already locked area that could produce a you know mega thrust uh, earthquake that's 9.0 or so or higher, um, I tend to pay attention um, within this area 17 earthquakes okay not a lot but it's the magnitude of earthquakes that's taken place that has me a little bit worried now if this was just a 4.5 you know we see a 4.5 and then followed up by a couple smaller quakes that's a good obvious sign that um you know we had a main shaker in this here uh these other earthquakes that are smaller than 4.5 are just readjustment um aftershocks right in normal activity in a normal earthquake uh, scenario but these are just not uh any quakes these are um, a multitude of many different moderate quakes um, there's been a no main quake I think the most the highest one was a 4.5 I believe right there yeah 4.5 um, in this area that's a blue circle but what has me worried is also just there's there's really no main shaker folks there's no main 5.0 like I was saying or a four point uh, you know, you got we got a 4.5, but there's all the other earthquakes are right around that same magnitude, 4.3 down here, uh, a whole bunch of middle and upper threes, another four pointer just occurring a little bit ago. Um, all the depths on these earthquakes are roughly around seven kilometers. Some are a little bit uh, different. Uh, there's a 28 up here, but that's uh, inland, well inland from this activity that's taken place. Uh, so roughly around seven, uh, seven kilometers below the surface there. Um, you know, so the only thing I can think of, folks, is that this is definitely something to watch um, today, tomorrow, and um, probably within the next couple days, something to keep an eye on as, you know, I don't think this is really releasing pressure um, if it is. It's building pressure uh, also down here to the south, and that's the San Andreas Fault System right here, right? So you got the San Andreas Fault Zone, the north coast section, but that also extends north of there 
into the Mendocino fault system right up there. Um, so San Andreas, you know, does the San Andreas really end or, or do they just, you know, have a name for it? It looks as though, uh, it looks on the map, it looks like it continues as one fault system, but uh, they have it set uh, where the uh, San Andreas fault ends up here and uh, begins the uh, the Mendocino fault system. And then, of course, the Cascadia Mega Thrust up here. Um, and many many different fault systems folks could go on and on about this but either way the point is uh, is to be on guard be on watch this is more concerning for me as well because I live not too far from this area and uh, the big one were to strike we're looking at uh, uh, some very strong shaking here where I live uh, which would definitely do damage for sure uh, if we were to see a, a 9.0 or a greater in this region um, Oregon not a whole lot of activity up there folks it's just basically within this tri-section area the mendocino fault cascadia mega thrust up here and then san andreas fault system down here to the south um you know like i say a lot of folks say and claim that a couple quakes you know are releasing pressure it's it's good for it you know to to release pressure in little bits well it you know it is but in this type of setup in this type of area with the Cascadia mega thrust subduction zone up here and the already fragile San Andreas fault system you know down here to the south it can't be good either way because um, I see this building up pressure uh, and it doesn't look like it's gonna stop here folks with the, uh, the amount of earthquakes that are happening uh, within this region you know like I say they're not they're not twos or not ones or you know fours and threes and um, it's just something to really be on guard about. And I'm watching this pretty closely here. Um, I do have a live seismograph station pulled up with um, a Mendocino, California station here. That's going to be this one up here, um, right here. You probably, you guys probably seen that three. What is that three pointer that came in a little bit ago, or a four pointer? Well, it's gone now. But um, uh, this station right here is the one to watch for activity along the Northern California coastline there. Uh, this station is not too far away from the activity that's taking place off the coast of Northern California. So, um, and here's just, let me refresh that one here. I didn't mean to click on it, but I'll go ahead and show you guys the, uh, um, the latest here from the Caltech website one. Go ahead and refresh that real quick. And you guys can see just a couple of red squares up there um, showing where the activity is. It, it kind of looks as though... You know, just looking on this map here, it looks as though it's kind of working its way inland towards, um, towards off the Mendocino Fault System into the uh, northern part of this, the uh, um, San Andreas Fault System right there. You know, you can see it, the yellow squares over here to the west. Make sure you guys can see what I'm seeing. Um, yes, okay. So yeah, the yellow square is indicating older earthquake activity. Well, like, you know, I guess this would counteract what I'm trying to say here, but you know the yellow to the west the blue and red more towards the east closer inland closer to the um, to the coast over here and actually on this map here you can kind of see here where the fault systems are just a little bit better here but on this map here they have the northern part of the San Andreas fault system ending out here south of Fort Bragg but that's not necessarily true um, there's actually been some studies that it does come up into um this part of the area up here where the earthquake activity is occurring so not for sure why the caltech uh usg website is different than the uh, than the usgs one but it is what it is um either way i think i think there's a uh, um some worry here with the activity that's occurring and uh, definitely going to be on watch earthquake watch here over the next day or two um for a larger earthquake out here um, in the northern California region here. I just see this building pressure more more so than releasing. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so getting back to the USGS map over here, like I was showing you guys the fault systems here. Um, uh, let me open. I got a couple different maps here. Open on my side, so I'm trying to find the right one to show you guys. Okay, so yeah. You know, so you guys can pretty much see here um, that line, San Andreas Fault Zone, north coast section, and then from there, you know, it's still marked at this, as the San Andreas Fault System. Um, once you guys, once you go up here a little bit, 
Sometimes I can't get it to work, but it extends up here and it looks as though like it connects to the region uh, of the Mendocino Fault System and the Cascadia Megathrust area up here. Um, so anyway, folks, it's just a, not, a, not a good area to have <clears throat> these type of earthquakes um, in a swarming type fashion here um, with no main shaker, you know, main, you know, no main quake. So a lot of times we do see buildups like this of smaller, not smaller, but moderate quakes uh, before a really big one happens. So that's why I'm kind of on guard and uh, having this earthquake watch here for um, Northern California region and uh, of course the San Andreas fault system that extends down here. Uh, that's pretty quiet down here in this region of the world, <clears throat> this region of the fault system, I should say. Uh, but still, definitely uh, we need to be on guard out here um, over the next couple days here. And like I say, I, I do have the live stream up and running with um, with uh, numerous stations around the globe. I did want to show you guys, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the uh, slow slip event movement up here. That's the uh, area of the Cascadia subduction zone. Um, not not surface quakes, but uh, quakes in general, or not quakes, <laughs> slippage in general along the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, this here is the last three hours. A uh, quite a bit of movement, uh, a cluster of quakes right there near Medford. Let's see if I can zoom in here. Real. I keep saying quakes, but they're not quakes, folks. It's uh, detection, slippage uh, between the the plates out here. Let's kind of see it a little bit better there. Uh, let's go the last 12 hours here. Not a whole lot different, but if you notice, folks, um, down here off the coast of Eureka, kind of south of the region where we're seeing this earthquake activity towards the surface, we're seeing a little bit of slippage down there, right? That's, that's lower than the earthquake activity. I should say deeper than the earthquake activity we're seeing at the surface. So there's some slippage being detected. Therefore, on the surface, we're seeing pressure uh, increase and getting these quakes happening right off the Mendocino coastline right there. So with this slippage of the Cascadia subduction zone with, with these plates here, um, that's why we're seeing the earthquakes pop off at the surface there. But this could be a bad sign uh, as, you know, it's, it's, it's a subduction zone. It's a mega thrust area um, and it's... It's uh, it's been a while since it's popped, right? Since we've had a nine pointer out there. What seventeen hundred is when the last one, uh, three hundred and what three hundred and twenty years ago almost. Uh, regular Cascadia quakes can range from roughly three hundred to uh, four hundred and fifty years on a sequence of you know regular regular uh, type quakes here, large ones. So, you know, it could it could happen today, it could happen 20, 30 years from now before we see another 9.0 earthquake out here. But either way, when we're seeing activity like this, um, it's just good to be on guard, right? Because I wasn't here 1700, you know, back in 1700. I don't think the scientists were out here measuring ground movement and slow slip events and uh, um, seismographs and everything back then. They weren't, so we don't know the exact detail of what went on prior to that 1700 earthquake but uh you know it happened people people had records of it and uh you know there's i could go into details about it but i just don't want to cover that right now so so anyway folks um let's get back over here real quick to the USGS map. I want to check here real quick. Something. Yeah, I need to get a pointer on here. You guys can't see my pointer on some some things. You can, but uh, like on this map, I don't think you guys can see. It. You can probably just see the screen moving around. So yeah, that was a 3.7 that just occurred right off there. And then, and then, of course, prior to that was that four-pointer. But either way, folks, uh, let's be on guard out here on the coast, Northern California coast. And um, you know, I'll do my best to keep an eye on things out here and update ASAP if I see anything on the uptick as well. But uh, right now, I feel it's really important to watch this region here uh, for some further larger earthquake activity. Uh, we have seen 
you know, I, I can't remember the last time that we've seen this type of, you know, swarming type activity here along the north coast with these minor to moderate earthquakes. Um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, folks, I'm, I'm trying to wake up I'm working night shifts this week, so it's kind of hard for me to focus and think out here. But, uh, uh, gosh darn it, I hope this thing doesn't happen when I'm at work. I don't want to die when I'm at work. That wouldn't be good. That'd be like a worst case scenario. <laughs> Either way, um, yeah, so we'll get back to the live stream, folks. If you are watching this update video, come on over to the Earthquake 3D live stream. We always have um, live data 24-7 of... Um, like I said, lots of different stations out here around the globe. For uh, for example, right now we have Mammoth Lakes up here, up on the top of this station right here. Uh, Mendocino Station right here is the one to watch for uh, earthquake activity, Northern California. And uh, they got Kermatic Islands, Fiji, Hollister down there south on the San Andreas Fault System, and also uh, just stationed out there in Wichita Hills, or yeah, Wichita Mountains, Oklahoma. And then I got several several other ones up here, but I'm kind of watching the main ones at the moment. Um, I guess we could just go ahead and keep it like that. Keep a Yellowstone station up there as well. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, I just I don't know what else to say, folks. Let's just be on guard and uh, keep an eye out. Uh, you know, there's there's a 50-50 chance something much bigger could happen, I guess. You know, but there's no guarantee something's going to happen, and there's also no guarantee something's not going to happen right uh, all i know is like when we see this this type of movement with the slow slip event um being recorded in that area of northern california and also along the cascadia subduction zone and we're getting these surface quakes that mean pressure that means pressure is continuously building in this already area towards the surface here already area that didn't make any sense did it this already built up region of pressure at the surface is what I was trying to say. Um, so let's just keep an eye on it. I'll keep an eye on the slow slip events, see if it increases anymore. If I see a major increase in uh, activity in this region, then uh, I'll pop back on here and do an urgent update uh, as I think that might be a, a signal to something much, much bigger uh, that's about ready to happen at the surface. So either way, folks, um, have a good day. I got to get, uh, get my mind clear and uh, get ready for some more fun. So. Have a good night out there. Stay safe and uh, always have. make sure you have an earthquake plan out there. Make sure you're stocked up on food and uh, water, all that good stuff, some beer. Anything uh, that you guys, uh, you know, depend on on a daily basis. So, all right, stay safe. Peace.